It's just fascinating to me that be, because of the warming and their receding of those glaciers, that brought about the circumstance where they could see that arc that made them go look at it. Hey, this looks like, uh, you know, a big portion of a circular feature. That's right. And what they were doing was flying over it from, I'm not sure where the Air Force Base, I think it's out here or it's out here in the, this area. But for years and years, they've been flying these reconnaissance missions, uh, one in particular called Ice Bridge, which is designed to take um, – radio waves and bounce them off the topography from, um, I think they call them a P3 or something, whatever of the standard NASA plane that's outfitted with all this, you know, uh, uh, sophisticated gear and it bounces, um, uh, RF off of the topography and then measures and is able to remove the ice and reveal what's below it. So these flights have been going on for years and then they, someone noticed that they had some strange radar tracks and all of this is well documented in the brief spurt of coverage that came after that. And what they realized that, see this kind of has hemisphere here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that that's actually a crater. See all that melted ice there? Boy, it makes mm -hmm. you wonder why the ice is melted right there and nowhere else within 100 miles, doesn't it? Huh? In fact, that's a new picture. That wasn't like that last year. There was Yeah, that's few, updated. Uh-huh. Here's a, a blog from my – from the Cosmic Tusk. I did about probably 10 of them on Hiawatha Crater. <clears throat> but what they did was flew uh, this with the, the ice penetrating radar and determined that there was a, a, a bowl beneath that hemisphere within the rock that there had been apparently to anyone's, you know, assessment right away. There, I think I've only found one dissenter within the scientific community that is actually uh, said publicly that he doesn't believe it's a crater and he's one of the holdouts on the YD hypothesis, right? <laughs> Makes sense. But discovered that there was a 22 mile wide molten bowl of rock, impact induced rock, otherwise known as a molten crater in Greenland sometime relatively recently in the geological past. And if you go to any of the previous, um, I guess y'all can still see my... We're looking yeah. at your browser here, yeah. Yeah, so you can see my browser, and you can go through the tusk, and there we go. Oh, yeah. See the plane through, fly there mm -hmm. and slice it all? Yep. Oh, and that nice. revealed is distinct, a classic crater has a, probably, you know, right up there with any that have ever been identified, right there in front of our eyes with U.S. planes and U.S. Uh, military planes and scientific planes flying over it for decades. And no one had ever noticed a brand new 22 mile crater. Now, the interesting thing is that these same scientists know that ice extraordinarily well. You know, it's hard to even appreciate how focused these gentlemen are on the passage of time as reflected in the ice layers that accumulate over time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they know that as you go further inland from there, there's 100,000 years of ice. That the Greenland ice sheet is general, more or less, dates back to what they call the Eemian period, and it goes back about 100, 110,000 years. But at the point that they do the radar survey of that crater, it's missing a 80, excuse me, what would it be? 87,000 years of ice, right? Mm-hmm that the ice that's there doesn't have any previous ice. So you can interpolate from that that it's only 13,000 years old. They hint at that number of, a number of times in the paper. And here's where it gets a little sketchy. Well, first of all, I got very, very excited about this because think about it. As we discussed earlier, when they discovered the dinosaur killer at the KT boundary, it was a 14-year process. And the process began with the identification of the impact proxies at the YD, excuse me, at the KT layer. Then the initial criticism, just as it was with the discovery of the Younger Dryas boundary was, well, where's your crater? Very legitimate question. If you believe that there are proxies for an impact at this layer of stratigraphy, where is your impact? The Alvarez team had to deal with that as well. They didn't find and confirm the uh, Chichilu impact in the Yucatan until 14 years later. The YDIH science has followed a similar arc where we found the proxies, 
the crater was always a weak point, very much so. We would have been the first to admit that. We think we should have found a crater. There are a number of other suspects. We think there were more than other, more than one impact. We've got a couple of candidates that were less dramatic than this that we already had in the, you know, already speculated about. But this was entirely new to us, entirely new to this team. And then they took it to science. It took a long time to get published. They had to work very, very hard to get this published because it scared the system. It scared the shit out of them. It scared all of those type people we were just talking about that were going to have to go back and reassess a career's worth of interpretation of data of various kinds. So the reviewers at Science, in the first drafts, we understand, and this is hearsay and, and, and secondhand, but from what I understand, the first drafts of that paper that was submitted to science by those people who have no relationship to ours made tw over 20 references to our hypothesis in the paper, in the initial reviews. By the time the reviewers were done with it and were comfortable publishing it, they had insisted that every single reference in the published paper to the YDIH be removed. So all they were allowed to say is we believe that this crater is at least within 3 million years old and very likely to be 13,000 years old. Mm -hmm. And then an interesting thing happened. Even though the publications were viewers in the science journal article science you know is two things science is both a bunch of publications from scientists that go through peer review and get placed in a, a monthly compendium and then there's a monthly magazine that reports on those findings and other things other other scientific matters in a narrative sense like a magazine the magazine side recognized the connection between this incredible article naming a brand new fresh uh, incredibly destructive crater, you know, in Earth history, and, and and the science news writer, particularly the author named Paul Vusen, the the article <clears> writer, said that this that this very clearly could be related to the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. So he wrote two articles in November 2018, one announcing the discovery of the crater, and another connecting it to the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. Well, this is as good a day as you could possibly have as a fan of this theory. You know, you're like, holy shit, we found the crater. Oh, they stripped out all the references to our theory, but holy cow, the, the science writer actually picked up and wrote a separate story, you know, a, a feature story saying that clearly this is related to the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis. So this is exciting. We, our own papers have been picked up in some of the nature reporting and it made it once into science, but it generally been returned to sender. If you send something to science on the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, much friendlier uh, ground over at uh, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences is where we, they generally published, okay? Science, who had not allowed the papers to be published, then had a feature article saying that we were related to this unbelievable new discovery, and then they named the discovery the number two science breakthrough of 2018. Uh. And you would have had to have been a science geek to catch that, but normally, that would come out, it would be named within 60 days, it was named the number two breakthrough scientific discovery of the year. See where it says there in red? This is from the science article. It would also vindicate proponents of the controversial Younger Dryas Impact Theory. A decade ago, they proposed that extraterrestrial impacts could account for hints of mayhem in the archaeological and geological record, but they could never point to a crater. And then, boom, it's in science, and he's pointing it straight out. Wow. What do you think happened? Crickets. Yep. <laughs> Nothing. Number two discovery of the year. No follow-up. No New York Times article. No Washington Post. Joel Ackenbach. No science communicators. <laughs> no Michio Kaku. No Neil Tyson. No science guy. None of that. No Michael Shermer. No, Michael Shermer. There you go, Randall. All of them. One way or another, the editorial team in Science Magazine, and that we heard there were some, some heated disputes. They named it the number two discovery. They directly retied it to our hypothesis. They clearly, the reviewers, did not allow it to be mentioned in that incredible revelatory paper. And then nothing. And then one of y'all pointed out in the break a moment ago, then... 
that it did pop back into the press and the public consciousness about three, three months later, they found another one yeah. 150 miles inland. <clears throat> and we've been saying all along there were probably multiple impacts. They found another one. So they had to report that and it got minor press and then poof. Yep. Poof. Nothing. No follow up. No nothing. This would have had at a minimum. So what they did was put an outer bound and it was obviously a pained outer bound because it's clearly younger. You can see it. You can literally see it in the ice that they, they, they had to make the, the most conservative assumption that everyone would accept, obviously reviewers and all to get it in the thing that within that this occurred within the last 3 million years. Okay. That in itself, yeah, in the quaternary, if it happened two, if we're completely wrong and it had nothing to do with the, the Younger Dryas impact, right, and it happened 2,900,000 years ago, it should still be in the news. No, there were people mm -hmm. walking the earth at that time, and mm -hmm. there are homo sapiens, or actually it had been a little bit pre-homo sapien, if it was at the outer, outer limits of what they accepted, but within the human experience, there would have been an event that created a 22 mile wide, two of them, the other one smaller, molten bowl of rock in the Northern Hemisphere. That's an incredible story, but it has gone nowhere. And it's, in my opinion, because of the bias against opening up this can of worms for modern Earth science, that something could have occurred 13,000 years ago that caused this. There hadn't been any follow-up. There's been no, hey guys, what's the next steps? Is anybody doing any coring? We've gotten some bits and scraps that some things are going on. And I know personally of other efforts that are being made to check based on this discovery, whether it can be proven through other means and dated to 13,000 years ago by people other than these researchers. Because for God's sakes, by now, it would not surprise me if the Dutch team and the folks at NASA were getting some pushback that, said, that says, this ties you up with that Younger Dryas thing. We're not going to fund it. So it just goes to show the, 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 the kind of the odd and, I don't know, suggestive nature of the debate, which, which says that even if you find the crater on this one, when they found the crater at Chichilu, it was worldwide news. It stayed in mm -hmm. science forevermore mm -hmm. because it didn't have any uh, implications for us per se. Mm -hmm. This one has huge implications. If they come out with another mm -hmm. paper that says, which says we have it reliably dated to, you know, the, the last, you know, within the last 30,000 years or whatever, or 20,000, I doubt they're going to get it. They actually, Theoretically, not even theoretically, they could forensically get it all the way down to the year, but I would doubt that would be the first report, the next refinement of the time. But if they did report, it would flip science on its complete back. So it's always difficult to get that knowledge out, but I wish them well. You know, I've asked them on Twitter, uh, have not heard back. It's, a, again, a deafening silence on, you know, what efforts are being made to date that crater. Because well, it was... Experience. They're, yeah, they'll they'll gradually come around. <laughs> well, I, well, I it's think getting, sorry, Randall. It's it's getting too close. Like I said at the beginning, to the to the A word part two, asteroid. Yeah, you know, impact and and of possible possibly uh, you know things that would affect culture and our our development as a civilization. So, is, right. is there something deep within our memories, as Randall has discussed in several of the videos going back ten years that I've been putting out? You know, is there some kind of genetic memory of this, uh, this, this kind of destruction that, that people don't even want to face up to? They don't are want to hear anything about an asteroid amnesia? or a crater. Yeah. Are we a, a species with amnesia? Uh, that's, that's, that's the same argument right there. Yes, exactly. Yep. Well, I think there's also a component of um, we do not want to supersede the discussion of anthropogenically driven climate change by bringing in these potential other factors that could okay. right, divert the conversation from that. Because I think there's definitely a, an attempt to keep the discussion focused on that to the exclusion of perhaps, you know, natural, natural factors that could actually make the increase, the slight increase in carbon dioxide pale into insignificance. And I think it's kind of a, 
a benign conspiracy with dramatically negative, deleterious effects. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that people are getting on conference calls and saying, hey, we got to cover this thing up. No, I'm, exactly. No, yeah, I agree. No, no, it's a natural thing. Ah, I hear that theory's a little kooky. Let's not design the test, you know, to, 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 to see if we could disprove the younger driest impact hypothesis. That's too much, you know, and that, that it, that it uh, influences the grant making and whatnot, that it's just too uncomfortable, that they don't want to bring it up. And it's not, which I guess is a conspiracy in itself, but there's just something going on. And I don't, again, I don't mean to point it out as a, as a, a, a grand or coordinated conspiracy, but more of a, like we said before, almost an amnesiac uh, response to understanding that we might have had uh, events happen that have been well described by a lot of myth we've dismissed. 